and welcome to day two of the ISSF World Cup Final 2023. I know we're already into day two of competition and it's hotting up because the rifle finals begin today. We have the 10 meter air rifle men coming up for you in a few moments time and then later at local time 12.30 we have the 10 meter air rifle women. So two pistol finals yesterday, and today it's the turn of the rifle. Good morning to you and welcome to day two of the ISSF World Cup final 2023. I know we're already into day two of competition and it's hotting up because the rifle finals begin today. We have the 10 meter air rifle men coming up for you in a few moments time and then later at local time 12.30 we have the 10 meter air rifle women. So two pistol finals yesterday and today it's the turn of the rifle to take centre stage here in Doha in Qatar. So there you have it on your screens, 10 metre air rifle final. We're just getting underway with some of the introductions. Jamie Stangroom of Great Britain, there he is, bedecked in a grey suit and white shirt, is our announcer for this World Cup final. My name is Rory McAllister, and good morning to you wherever you are around the world. Do make yourself known, leave your support and your comments if you're watching on YouTube. And likewise, if you're joining us on Facebook, then you're very welcome. So the athletes just coming in in reverse order. So a nice balance of countries in this particular final. Coming up in the women's final later, there are three athletes from the People's Republic of China, almost a repeat of the 10 meter air pistol final yesterday, but we've had India, now Austria. And we'll go through the athletes in more detail in just a second during the preparation and sighting time. Come the Czech Republic, or Czechia, as they're more recently known. So we've had India, Austria, Czech Republic, and now Serbia, who have already been represented in a final with Zorana Arunovic yesterday in the 10 meter air pistol. So a nice kiss to camera. Thank you very much for that, Zalan. I think we received that. I'm sure Hungary, your country, wishes you well. It's always nice to see a bit of personality, isn't it, coming from our athletes in a final such as this, under so much pressure and yet still time to blow a kiss to the camera. So Japan represented in a final for the first time here in Doha. And Germany, well, the German team never too far away from a final. And nice to hear some loud support for Max as he comes in. And he does look focused, doesn't he? So here's a chap I remember from the Tokyo Olympics, Yang Horan. 
representing the People's Republic of China. So the jury member in charge is being announced now. So that's Kim Yen of Vietnam. Jury member in charge. And once again, the chief range officer for this final, representing Germany, is Mr. Uwe Volks. So that's the official announcements and introductions done. And there is our chief range officer. Once again, nice and friendly, giving us a wave. Thank you, Uwe. Two waves, in fact, so two for the price of one today. So this is how it finished in qualification. Naoya Okada of Japan at the top, 632.0. Yang Horan, that famous name from the Tokyo Olympics, 631.8. And if you just look at some of those other scores just further down the qualification, fourth and fifth, even sixth with Martin Strenthal of Austria, you can just see how close it was with a difference of 0.1. So it's been a hotly contested qualification process, and here's how they line up. So People's Republic of China with Yang Horan on firing point A, Maximilian Ulbrecht of Germany on B, Naoya Okada of Japan on C. We have Zalan Pekla of Hungary on D, Lazar Kavasevic of Serbia on E, Jiri Pravatsky of Czech Republic on F, Martin Strenthal of Austria on G, and finally, Friday Hazarika of India, who completes the lineup on firing point H. So there'll be two series of five shots, and then we'll move to single shots. And I'll explain a little bit more in just a second. Let's have a closer look at these athletes. So Yang Horan, bronze medalist in Tokyo, and then took a gold as well in the mixed team. I was there myself to announce that particular medal ceremony in Tokyo. And Wang, the coach, looking on. So Chief Range Officer has called the preparation and sighting time of five minutes. So the athletes will now settle in and take some practice shots. So here's Maximilian Ulbrecht of Germany, 22 years old now, the world number three, and a gold medalist back earlier this year in March. That was Tallinn. Again, I was there myself to witness that one, and Joshim Bellman once again is his coach for today. It was a great competition actually in Tallinn and Estonia. The temperatures back then of minus five. It's a far cry from what it's like here in Qatar where temperatures are around 30 degrees. So Naoya Okada of Japan, now 33 years old, the world number five and a gold medalist in Jakarta at the beginning of the year with the ISSF World Cup. So Wu Yong Kim is the coach looking on. And I wonder if Japan can feature in the medals here today. Zalan Pekla, who blew us a kiss as he came in in front of camera into the field of play. Now 23 years old, representing Hungary, gold medalist at the ISSF World Cup in Baku, amongst many other achievements. Plenty of medals as a junior as well, twice a silver medalist at the World Championships as a junior. No, that's not East Van Penny. <laughs> Lazar Kovacevic of Serbia it is on firing point E. World number 24, so it's done well to get here to the World Cup final. Here in Doha, a gold medalist at Baku last year in the World Cup and also team gold at the European Championships. And that was last year, uh, sorry, this year even, 2023. Stefan Plentikosic. This is coach. So Jiri Pravatsky of 
Czech Republic bronze medalist at the ISSF World Cup in Lima earlier this year. 22 years old, but already with a wealth of experience. And also a gold medalist at the Grand Prix for the ISSF this year, 2023. And Lobos Opalka, always a chilled out presence, is his coach. So let's move on then to firing point G. And Martin Stanford of Austria, 39 years old, the eldest competitor in this final. And the most experienced team gold in Jakarta at the World Cup. Also team gold at the Grand Prix this year, 2023. And he's world number 14 at the moment. And you can just see him settling in there with not only his sights on the target, but I'm sure with his sights on a medal. And Hubert Pickler. is the coach. He was a very lively chap to be around, I can tell you that. And now, Raide Hazarika of India, 22 years old, world number 21, coming here to Doha in Qatar. And a gold medalist at the World Cup, in the, sorry, the World Championships even, as a junior, that was the champ in 2018. And also a silver medalist at the ISSF. World Cup in Baku. Thomas Farnik is his coach. So we're about to get underway. There's 50 seconds left on the sighting time. And that's where just the athletes just get a chance to have a feel for the actual finals hall and get settled in. Bullseye 0.5 of a millimeter. I mean. I mean, that's small enough when it's when it's in front of you, let alone when it's actually 10 metres away. So 24 shots could be the amount of shots in this, unless, of course, we go to shoot-offs. But there'll be two series of five shots, where the athletes have four minutes 10 to complete those five shots. And once we get past the second series of five shots, we'll move to single shots. So 5.5 kilos is the maximum weight for a rifle, and if you've ever tried this or ever held a rifle like this, you'll you'll realise how difficult it is, particularly as the as the final moves on. And yes, you have a rest, and you can see there the athletes have a rest for their rifle, and the rest can be no higher than your shoulder. Those are the rules. So you'll see there the rests are at varying heights depending on each athlete's height. So the world record, will we see that go? 253.3. See the safety flag as well, just that bit of plastic hanging out of the end of the rifle. And those can be removed when the low command is given and then start. And it's so important that the athletes follow and listen to the instructions of the chief range officer. So we're underway. Who will be the first to shoot then in this 10-metre air rifle men's final? Live here from Qatar in Doha. If you are just joining us, then welcome. Welcome along. Sit back. Enjoy. Or who knows, you may be standing up. But wherever you are, enjoy this final. 10.8 from Pekla of Hungary. A great way to start. 10.9 is the highest individual score you can have. looking at the rifle there of Jan Horan. I do like some of the decoration that he's got on the side with the colours of the People's Republic of China flag. 10.6 from Yang Horan. Hazarika also with a 10.6. Okada with a 10.6. So some high scores coming in already and you'd expect that. Just on the back of qualification. So these athletes have qualified this morning and had some practice, if you like. Got their eye in. Now it's the time to do it in the finals hall. This is when the pressure starts to mount.
So some scores now in around the, the lower 10s. Yang Horan with a 10 that time. So a 10.6 and then a 10. But you'd pretty much expect scores to be 10 or above in this opening five shot series. Just keeping an eye on the clock. Two minutes left. It does tick down pretty quickly. And whilst it's easy to sit and look and think, well, they've got quite a bit of time, haven't they? Once you try it yourself, I urge you to give it a go. If you like what you see and you think, perhaps I could make a career in shooting, or at least even just do it for a bit of fun. Just get in touch with your local shooting club. Google is your friend in terms of that. I'm sure you'll be able to find somewhere local to you. So Zalan Pekla is the first to complete his five-shot series with still over 90 seconds to go. The final shot for 10.7. And just look at that grouping as well from Zalan Pekla. 52.4 is a very impressive total. I mean, anything over 53 is really good going. So Pravatsky just 0.1 behind on 52.3. Just when this first shot series of five shots completes, then it'll at least give us an idea of where some of the athletes are in terms of their frame of mind and their focus today. Still with some distance to go, though, because there'll be another five shot series, and then we'll move to single shots. And the first athlete is eliminated from this final after 12 shots. That'll be eighth place. And then seventh place after 14 shots and then all the eliminations come two shots thereafter. So after 12 shots, after 14, after 16, 18, and so on. And I'll keep you up to date as we go along. So Yang Horan, strong finish with a 10.8, and finishes on a 51.9. So let's see how things are looking on the scoreboard. So Naya Okada of Japan is the one in front, 53.1. I did say a second ago, anything over 53 is likely to get you anywhere in the world in any competition. It's likely to get you at the top, or at least fighting for first place. And Zalan Pekla of Hungary, 0.7 behind. Pravatsky of the Czech Republic, just 0.1 behind. And then some differences that are very, very close down the rest of the scoreboard. So that's the first five shot series completed. And now we move to a second series of five shots. You can just hear the start command given in the background by our Chief Ranger Officer Uwe Volks of Germany. So Okada of Japan, can he stay in front? 53.1, an impressive total after that first series of five shots. So just looking now at Martin Stremthal, the eldest competitor at 39 years old. And a shot in the nine ring, 9.7 from Hazarika. Well, some other shots in the low tens. Another 9.7. That was from Pravatsky, but he does make up for that. The following shot being a 10.6. So Yang Horan, meanwhile, with a 10.6. A 10.7 from Okada of Japan. So Hazarika and Pravatsky both opened up this series with a shot in the nine ring. So Pravatsky, meanwhile, the last two have been in the high tens. Hazarika, meanwhile, with a 10.0. Let's also see what his third shot will be. There's always plenty of pressure on the Indian team, particularly in rifle. That's one of the disciplines where they do excel. Strengthful. 
looking pretty relaxed, so experienced. Last shot with a 10.4. So some great grouping so far from Yang Hodan of the People's Republic of China on firing point A. A 10.8 from Kovacevic and a 10.8 from Pekla of Hungary, who once again has completed this series with 90 seconds to go. And even actually just came in a few seconds before that. 10.9 from Hazarika. Funny, we were just talking about his performance a second ago. And I believe that's the first 10.9 of this final. Now, this is when the final will start to take shape. Just as our remaining athletes now take their fifth and final shots in this five shot series. You can see the shot clock just off in the background. And Hubert Bickler, a face of concern perhaps. And a 10.1 from Stremfel to finish. Yang Hodan, meanwhile, with, again, a strong finish, 10.7. So, Okada will continue to lead the competition, 105.3. Finished at the top of the scoreboard after the first series of five shots, and it looks like there'll be no change. Obviously, there's a change in the score. But 105.3 is very impressive indeed. So Okada of Japan still leads. The difference now, 0.7, 53.1 at the top. And Plavatsky, who was third, drops down to fourth. So Okada now increases that lead was leading after that first series of five shots, as you've just seen, and now after 10, a total of 105.3 with a 0.2 difference from Yang Horan of the People's Republic of China, and a 0.1 difference. Zalan Pekla of Hungary is still in the hunt. And now we move to the elimination phase. So Martin Strempfel, 0.8 behind, needs to make up that gap and that margin if he's to survive in this final. Hazarika also knows it's 0.5 behind. It's 0.5 behind Ulrich, the German. So pressure now on the 39-year-old Martin Strempfel of Austria. If you are just joining us, then welcome along. Thanks for coming. This is the ISSF World Cup final, the culmination of this incredibly busy year many World Cups and a World Championships and, of course, the big event next year as we look forward to the Olympic and Paralympic Games. So this is when the pressure really starts to mount. And again, you just see Martin Stempfel just resting his rifle there after a 10.4 shot. It's in the mid tens. Some of them were lower. Ulbricht with a 10.1 and Yang Horan with a 10.2. But it means that Okada of Japan is still in front. It's at 115.7. Meanwhile, Martin Strenthal could still be leaving this final. It looks like he's 0.9 behind, or just trying to see the scoreboard in the distance. So he's 1.0 behind Ulbricht on 114.3 and Strenthal on 113.3. So it's a bit of a gap, a bit of a margin in 10 metre rifle shooting. We have seen differences like that turn around, but at this sort of level and at a competition like this, with the kind of names and calibre of athletes we've got in front of us, it's looking likely Martin Strenthal might be leaving. But of course, we'll just have to wait and see. Things can change. It's 
strength for with a 10.6. That's a great shot. So a 9.5 or lower from Ulbrecht. His strength forward would survive. And it's a 10 from Ulbrecht. So it's all over for the moment for Martin Strenthal of Austria. He's the first to leave this final. Arguably the most experienced athlete we had in this final, 39 years old. Came here as the world number 14. And Hubert Bickler, his coach, gives a round of applause, joins in with the rest of the crowd. And Martin Strenthal leaves this World Cup final in eighth place. So, meanwhile, turning our attention to the top of the scoreboard, there's no change with Akada of Japan in front. So, he was leading after 10 shots, as you can see there. 105.3 was the total, the gap was 0.2. That's been increased to 0.5. It's still Yang Horan of the People's Republic of China in second place, and no change in third either. Zalan Pekler of Hungary still in the hunt for a medal, 0.3 behind the Chinese athletes at the moment. So we've had shot 12, our first elimination. We now move to shot 13. Peckler again first to shoot, opens up with a 10.5. The 10.6s from Kovacevic and Pravatsky. Also another 10.6 from Jan Horan. It just shows you the, the standard. I mean, they make it look so easy, but we really are amongst the best of the best here. So Okada of Japan manages to hold on to that lead. There was a 0.5 gap. And that's been reduced. Point one, Yang Horan of the People's Republic of China is right on the heels of Naoya Akada. And I wonder now, this is a, a test of Akada's metal, as we would say in England. So 50 seconds goes back on the clock. Just looking at some of the shot statistics from Hazarika. Just see nerves perhaps at the beginning. Opened up with a decent shot around a 10.6, and then there was a few wayward shots down in the nine ring, and has since recovered. And has managed to get up to sixth place as it stands, so still some ground to make up if he's to secure his place in this final, as he's 0.8 behind Kovacevic as it stands. Yang Horan with a 10.3. Let's keep an eye on what Akada can shoot. That's a 10.7. So there's now a 0.5 difference at the top, but we have our next elimination from this final, and it is going to be that man right there who we were just talking about. So Friday, Hazarika of India leaves this final in seventh place. World number 21 inserts his safety flag into the rifle. Those are the rules. Leaves it on the stand. And then just takes a slow walk back to his seat. And it's mainly the restrictions of the shooting suit itself rather than perhaps a walk of disappointment. Who knows, it could be both. So just switch round and all bricks. Of Germany survived. Hazarika left us in seventh place. Akada of Japan still leads. The difference once again is back to 0.5. It was 0.1 for just a second there. But Yang Horan isn't going to give up without a fight, I'm sure. So another 50 seconds on the clock ticks down. That is the allocated time for the single shots. Once again, it might seem like a long time if you're sitting at home. You can just see here, looking at Max Ulbricht of Germany. You can see sometimes how long, inverted commas, it takes to settle into the shot. 
Shake it ahead as well, 10.0. Max knows that that's not enough at this stage and not enough against the caliber of athletes we've got. 10.9 10 there, for example, from Kovacevic. It's really impressive art. Second 10.9 of this final. So our next elimination will be coming up after this next shot. And Ulbricht of Germany finds himself in a place of predicament. 155.6. It's a 1.2 difference behind Peckler, at least it was. Peckler with a really strong 10.6. 10.3 from Kovacevic, 10.4 from Pravatsky. And Ulbricht with a 10.2, it's not going to be enough. And sixth place has now been confirmed. So representing Germany, the 22-year-old who still has a very bright future ahead. Silver medalist at the World Cup in Cairo earlier on this year. And a gold medalist at the European Championships in Tallinn. But Max Ulbricht of Germany leaves this final. He goes over to check, shake the hand of his coach, that's Achim Wielmann. So Okada of Japan was leading with a 0.5 difference on 147.4, and now it's Yang Horan of the People's Republic of China as Okada has slipped down to fourth place. There's a tie for second between Kovacevic and Plivatsky. Interesting to see how Yang Horan has just stayed on the heels of Okada and just kept on going, kept on plugging, and now leads this competition. 40 seconds left on the clock. This is when the drama starts to build. 10.8 for Zalan Pekler of Hungary. Great shot. Stop. And a 9.9 from Yang Horan, which really does change things. 9.8 also from Akada. Meanwhile, the other three athletes all with shots over 10. So at the moment, at the moment, Kovacevic is leading the competition, representing Serbia with Zalan Pekler of Hungary now in second place, and Jiri Povatsky of the Czech Republic in third, joint third position with Yang Horan. So there's a tie now for third position. So amazingly, Naoya Okada, who was leading this competition for so long, just looking at him right now, could, could be leaving this final. It just shows you how things can swap round. He's 0.5 behind Yang Horan. So 10.6 from Yang Horan. And that means Okada with a 10.5. It's not going to be enough, even that 10.6, it was all over for Okada because he wasn't able to make up the gap. So, what a performance from him, and disappointing at the same time, I'm sure that's how he'll be feeling. Leaving the competition for so long, and if this is your first World Cup final that you're watching for the ISSF, then you'll just see that's how things can switch round. Waves to the crowd nonetheless. And true Japanese style, takes fifth place with honour and acceptance and a big smile as well. It's nice to see 
clearly obviously was hoping for more. But Naoya Okada leaves us in fifth place. Was fourth, and then it just uh, switched around. As you can see there, 188.5 and 188.5 between Yang Horan and Pekla. Still tied for third. Okada, meanwhile, as I said, leaves us in fifth. And Kovacevic of Serbia continues now to lead. What a final he's had. Just shows you if you're there or thereabouts, in the middle of the scoreboard, a couple of decent shots. A few shots in the nine ring from some of the other athletes, and things will change and start to improve. So 9.5 from Pravatsky. Kovacevic, the leader, meanwhile, with a 10.2. And a 10.8 from Pekla, which has now put him in front. So once again, more drama here in Doha. The scoreboard is just doing the hokey-cokey and in and out, shaking it all about at the moment. 10.4 from Yang Horan. So an interesting conclusion because fourth place coming up. The cruelest place to finish in a final meaning you just miss out in the middle, particularly at a World Cup final as well. Stop. After all those competitions, after all those months and days and minutes of training, and it comes down to a competition such as this at the end of the year, and you're just trying to find something, just trying to dig deep. So Pilatsky with a 10.7. Oh, and Yang Horan with a 9.8. That's a disaster, really, at the moment for Yang Horan because he's now dropped out of the medals and it's switched round. Pravatsky survived. Firing point A, taking a bow to the crowd with real honour and grace. Just misses out on a medal representing the People's Republic of China. Yang Horan, 27 year old and world number four inserts his safety flag into his rifle, will go back to his seat and leaves this World Cup final without a medal. So it's Pekla versus Kovacevic versus Provatsky, Hungary, Serbia and the Czech Republic will now battle it out for the medals in this terrific 10-metre air rifle men's final. This is exactly what we wanted here in Doha. Scoreboard moving around, real high class, world-class shots and 209.8 is the narrow lead of Zalan Pekler of Hungary 0.2 in front and I'm sure if you're back in Hungary at the moment I don't believe I think his fan Penny will be watching from home Ten point five for Pekler, nine point eight for Kovacevic. And Provatsky here with a ten point one. So Pekler of Hungary stays in front, two hundred and twenty point three. Meanwhile, two hundred and nineteen point four for Kovacevic. That's a point four difference in front of Provatsky of the Czech Republic. So the gold medal could be going to Hungary. We'll have to see over the next few shots. First of all, though, we need to decide the bronze medal. So this is shot 22 to decide bronze. Tense here in Doha. If you are just joining us, it's been a brilliant final, exactly what we wanted. Scoreboard's been moving around, had some shock exits. Yang Horan of the People's Republic of China has just left us in fourth place. I was expecting him at least to get up there in the medals, but wasn't to be today. Pekla with a 10.6, meanwhile. 10.2 from Kovacevic and a 10.5 from Pravatsky. So the bronze medal has been decided with that 10.5 shots and a total of 229.5.
Gili Provaski of the Czech Republic is the bronze medalist and takes the first medal of day two here at the World Cup final in Doha, Qatar. Great achievement. And our boss, Opelka, is the coach shaking his hand, as does Hubert Bickler. And also Thomas Farnick as well, just joining in with some congratulations. So this is the battle now for the gold medal. Provatsky, they see it confirmed as the bronze medalist, 229.5. And Lazar Kovacevic of Serbia is 1.3 behind Pekla, but there is a possible two shots still to come unless we were to go to a shoot-off. So 1.3 gap. Can it be changed? Can it be switched? Can Kovacevic turn a silver into gold? Well, a 9.6 is a great way to start for him, and a 10.3, so... The gap is now down to 0.6. And those sorts of margins, a 0.6 margin earlier on in a rifle final would be considered to be fairly normal and achievable in terms of switching the scores round. But this is going to be a really interesting conclusion to this final. Pekla versus Kovacevic, Hungary versus Serbia. 50 seconds will be loaded onto the clock and the difference is 0.6 here we go so Pekla a shot early as he always does 10.7 and it means he can't do it, Kovacevic, with a 10.9, wasn't going to be enough. Zalan Pekla of Hungary, absolutely delighted. Grimace of the face, and punches his rifle high above his head, right into the air. Inserts his safety flag. And Hungary have claimed the first gold medal of day two. And yes, Zalan, well done. He came in introduced into the field of play, blew a kiss to the camera, perhaps that was the good luck charm he needed, and finished off with a fist pump to camera. So thanks for playing to the crowd, Zalan Pekla, the gold medalist. Let's not forget the performance of this man from Serbia, Lazar Kovacevic. Great performance, silver medal on a total of 249.4. He ended up 1.8 behind in the end. And Jerry Povatsky just joins the lineup for the moment, confirmed as the bronze medalist. So Jamie Stangroom, the announcer, confirms it for us. Jerry Povatsky of the Czech Republic, the bronze medalist here at the World Cup final. So Lazar Kovacevic of Serbia, confirmed as the silver medalist. And Zalan Pekla, gold medalist, 23 years old, came here as the world number one, and that shows you why Hungary have got such strength in rifle shooting. Pistol as well, but for today, the rifle takes centre stage, and Zalan Pekla is congratulated by the ISSF president, that's Mr Luciano Rossi, and Hungary have the first gold medal of day two. So we're going to bring you some interviews with the medalists in just a second, so don't go anywhere at all here on our live stream. Remember to leave your comments of support. Do like the video, subscribe to the channel as well for more live content. Uh, the women's final is coming up in 45 minutes' time. That's the 10-metre air rifle women's final here at the World Cup final in Doha, Qatar. But for now, we'll be back in a few moments' time with some interviews with the medalists. See you shortly.